Praise the Lord. Welcome to today's Dandy Way Bible Study. I am Dr. Tunji Akintilo, and I welcome you to continuation of our study of the book of Genesis. We are on Genesis chapter 26, and today we start part 3. Part 3 of our study of Genesis chapter 26. Uh, the topic of our discussion today is sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Because that is one of the main themes of this segment of the scripture that we are studying. So let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we commit our study of uh, Genesis 26 unto you. We welcome the Holy Spirit uh, to continue to be our teacher. We pray that you will accomplish your will in our lives, even as we look at the issue of sowing and reaping today. Father, Lord, help us as we uh, uh, learn your word and help us to be uh, to put your word into, 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 into action in our life, that we will not be hearers only, but doers of your word, that we may reap at the right time. And your name will continue to be glorified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, Genesis chapter 26, uh, we're going to read today uh, verses 1 to 5, and then we will jump to verses 12 and 14. Last week we dealt with verses 6 to 11, which was kind of a parenthesis in the flow of the narration. So the main theme, as I mentioned, of our uh, discussion today is uh, sowing and reaping. So please pay attention. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Praise God. So I start Genesis 26 from verse 1. I have New King James Version. There was a famine in the land, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lines, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lines, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So, going down to verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So, the Philistines envied him. So, as I mentioned, the main theme of this uh, uh, narrative is sowing and reaping. And I want to just make a quick point that uh, the scripture is talking about Isaac here. What happened in the life of Isaac. This is like the, uh, a biography. But God is still talking to us today. He's telling us the same thing today. That despite the COVID pandemic going on, dwell in this land. That is verse 3. Genesis 20. I'm applying now, okay? Making an application. Genesis 26, 3. Dwell in this land. And I will be with you and bless you. Despite whatever may be going on out there. Whatever all the negative things we are hearing in the news. And the scientists are telling us. And the demographics and the data are saying will choose to listen to God, okay? And God told Isaac, who was in a similar situation, in a famine, don't go to Egypt. 
Isaac obeyed. And in verse 12, Isaac sowed in that land in, during that pandemic, okay? We are still commanded to live our lives, focus on God, and sow in that land so that we will get the same results. Isaac reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. That is verse 12. So Isaac sowed and reaped. Sowing and reaping. This principle of sowing and reaping is a spiritual law. Okay? We found this in Genesis 8, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, which we studied a while ago. And we can go back to take a look and read it again. Genesis 8, 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. This is a spiritual law that God himself pronounced for posterity. He said it, told it to Noah. Actually, this was a kind of a preamble to the Noahic covenant. Because if you go to the next chapter where the covenant was actually pronounced, okay, Genesis 9-1. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Who are the sons, the posterity of Noah? You and I, everyone on the face of the earth today are posterity of Noah. And God is telling us, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. But the preamble to that is to give a foundational law. Maybe actually, you know, Genesis 9-1 depends on Genesis 8-22. For you to get the full blessing of 9-1, the foundation was laid first in 8-22. That, look, this is a law that is going on. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. And then the blessing was pronounced. So, sowing and blessing uh, and reaping, sowing and reaping is the foundation of the blessing of Noah. Praise God. So sowing and reaping by itself is also a blessing. Now, there is a challenge here, okay? Everybody loves to reap. Who wouldn't love to? I mean, reap, reaping involves some work, okay? If you planted corn, you still have to get the tools or the machinery to go harvest at the time of harvest it involves some work but the harder part of this principle is the sowing because many a time you really don't have anything much <laughs> to sow but God is still telling you go ahead and sow sowing is a challenge okay and uh, it involves the process of planting seeds, putting what you have little of, you know, and putting it in the ground, just putting it there by faith. But that is the only process that will produce reaping. The farmers do it all the time. Okay, they already set some seeds aside. This is for planting for the next season. Those seeds that they set aside for planting, they take them one by one and put them under the ground. I mean, they have to till the soil and do everything it takes, water the soil and whatever. But they put the seeds in the ground to die. So whatever they put in the soil is, is gone. But it is that process that produces reaping. So we can tell right away that this, 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 this process is 
we take it for granted because we've seen it operating, we've seen it happen over and over again, but it's really not understandable. We, we really don't understand it, okay? This, this is purely the work of God. And we find more illustration about that in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11. And if we can go there to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, I still have the New King James Version. So we're going to read verses 1 to 6. Ecclesiastes um, 11. <coughs> Excuse me. So I read from verse 1. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a seven to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Many of us can see the challenge already. Okay? Cast your bread upon the waters. That doesn't sound like a suggestion. It sounds like a command. We are actually commanded to sow. Because I, I believe if you really don't sow, there's no reaping. Reaping is dependent on sowing. Sowing is what produces reaping. So God is telling us in his word, cast your bread upon the waters. We can see the challenge, as I said already. Imagine you waking up in the morning hungry, <laughs> probably didn't even eat the previous night, managed to gather some whatever money you find around, get a loaf of bread, okay? And coming from the store where you manage to buy the bread, maybe you even bought it on credit. <laughs> You have to go over a creek, and this scripture comes to your mind. Cast your bread, <coughs> excuse me, cast your bread upon the waters. The bread that you need, cast it upon the waters. Now you remember the second part. For you will find it <coughs> after many days. You will find it after many days. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, there's a guarantee that if you cast the bread on waters, upon the waters, you will find it after many days. But you have to cast the bread. Challenge, isn't it? Okay. We have the guarantee that we don't understand how it works. But we can see that there is some creative power behind sowing and reaping. Because when a farmer puts the seed under the ground, that seed is gone, it's dead, it dies. At the time they are reaping, what they are reaping is not what they put in the ground. It's a new body, which is a replica of what they put in the soil in the, in the first instance. Uh, for example, if it's a piece of corn, or a maize that is put in the ground, it can't. It usually bears like two heads on a stalk. Each of those stalk, if you take out the uh, the the heads of corn, usually produces two on each stalk, and each of those heads has seven hundred corn seeds, meaning. You put one in the ground, you get 1,400 at the time of reaping. That is a miracle. So, let's continue. Verse 2, Ecclesiastes 11. Give a seven to seven, also to eight. For you do not know what evil will be on the earth. We are being instructed here to diversify. Okay? Uh, don't just put all your eggs in one basket. We are asked to diversify, you know, put a little in this industry, another one in this industry, a little bit in transportation, little in energy, little in uh, 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 healthcare, and so on and so forth. For you do not know what evil will be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, 
in the place where the tree falls, there it shall be. This verse 3, the uh, uh, commentary on verse 3 can be extensive. Okay? It's telling us to keep, if there's something you are doing and you believe God is leading you in that direction, keep putting little and little and little and little because you get to a critical point that the next little bit that you put will just bring you a whole bunch of harvest. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall be. Whatever way you see the direction is going, that's the direction is going. People use this principle in stock trading. They say, buy low, sell high. When you see the trend going, those that are expert in stock trading, get on it and ride this wave. <laughs> buy the stock. When it gets high, they sell. When it's low, they buy again. Praise God. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Pray for me, okay? We we'll finish today's study. So, um, now, verse 4. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. This chapter 11 of Ecclesiastes deals with investment. And we are finding now in verse, in verse 5 that these works of God, so this sowing and reaping is the works of God who makes everything, makes. Sowing and reaping involves creation. The seed that you put in the ground is not the seed that you reap, but it is a new body. So it involves the works of God, and God is commanding us to do it. And so this chapter is one of the chapters, is the, we're told right away, is the work of God, okay? And that will tell us this is one of the things that the devil is resisting me from talking about it right now. And I'm, and I'm pushing back, okay? Sowing and reaping is the works of God. We don't understand it, okay? Verse 6, in the morning sow your seed. In the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. In the morning sow your seed. Go to your regular work. In the evening, don't stop. There's something called working five to nine. Finish your regular work at five, you get home, you start. Because it is working five to nine, the one that you do by yourself, for yourself, that makes the big difference in the long run. And verse 5 again. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of our who is with child. So you do not know the works of God who makes everything. Anyone that really wants to enjoy the blessing of God, the, the, the covenant of Noah, you have to sow. In fact, this, this chapter, Ecclesiastes starts like a commandment. Cast your bread upon the waters. As we continue, we will find out that we have to be careful about this because, as I mentioned, this is one of the chapters that the devil resists because if you really get this and you are prosperous in the area of sowing, let's remember what we just read in Genesis chapter 26. Genesis 26, I believe that is verse 14. Okay? For, the, for, for Isaac had possessions of flocks and herds and a great number of servants, so the Philistines envied him. So the devil wants to attack you. 
okay? Because when you have all these possessions, you as a child of God, you become an instrument of help. You actually become the blessing to others that you can influence things positively for the kingdom of God and the devil doesn't like that. So he wants to even stop me from talking about it now, but I'm not going to. Please pray for me, okay? Continue to pray for us to finish this lesson. Chapter 11, Ecclesiastes. is also a faith builder. You have not really grown in your faith until you go into sowing and reaping. Because you have to throw that bread that you hardly have. Throw it in the waters. And believe God that you will find it after many days. When people go into investment, their faith grows. In fact, that is where you see God at, at work. One of the ways, not the only ones. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. We are going to finish this lesson by God's grace. <coughs> so, we grow our faith when we go into operation of this sowing and reaping. Praise the Lord. The devil is a liar. So, because we have an enemy, we don't, just don't want to rush into it. Because the reaping sounds good. It's pleasant. Oh, who doesn't like reaping? I, I would like to reap and get wealthy and have possessions. And because of, you know, you, you want to look at having a fancy house, a fancy car, wearing fancy clothes, having all the resources, you may be tempted to rush into sowing. But there's an enemy, as I mentioned. So we have to do this with knowledge. We have to do it prayerfully. You have to find out what is the best way to sow. You know, you hear about going to your business, going to your own business, which is good. But I heard a preacher say, and I'm going to repeat that today, the best way to go into a business is not to go into that business. Okay? The best way to go into a business is to research <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We're going to finish today's lesson. Is to research the business. We have to research the business. The best way to go into a business is to study that business. What does it take to go into it? How much is it going to cost you? What are you looking to achieve? What are the potential returns? How long is it going to take to get the returns? Because as a business expert, or as business experts have told us, America has the numbers, okay? Of all new businesses that start in America, 97% fail within the first year. 97%. So only 3% succeed in a year now. <coughs> of the 3% that succeed, in a year. Over 90% of those fail in the next five years. So sowing and reaping is like, look, this is spiritual war. <laughs> this is battle. It sounds good. We are commanded to do it. We should go into it, but we should be careful how we go into it. You need to protect yourself because whatever you sow is gone for good. And that is not a little statement. Whatever it is you sow, 
is gone for good. That is why they also say again that don't invest what you cannot afford to lose. Because once you invest it, you've lost, assume it is lost for good. The fruit, the harvest that you get at the end is a new entity. Continuing with the American data, okay? Even established American businesses, they know that any new venture that they go into, they have all the money, they have the millions and billions to do all the research, do all the studies, employ people, they have all the networks. Their best result from any new venture is 50%. They are better than the general population. They only get 3%. That is why a lot of businesses buy other businesses because they know you already went through the first five years, you're on your feet. That's why they will buy you. Excuse me. We're going to continue. Give me one second. <coughs> Devil really doesn't like this discussion, but we are continuing. Praise God. So you need to sow so you can reap, so you can enjoy the Noahic covenant. But we have to do it carefully. So what are the question will be the best way to sow? What are the best ways to sow? <clears throat> we sow in people. That's number one. Sow in people. And we find that in the book of Proverbs. Okay, let's go to Proverbs eleven twenty four. Proverbs eleven twenty four and twenty five. There is one who scatters. Actually, maybe I should read it in the NIV. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Invest in people. Give. Don't hold back. Give to people. Number two, invest in God's work. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with all your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled with overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Praise God. Okay, next will be carefully selected investment. Let's read the word of our Lord Jesus Christ on this topic. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, <coughs> it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So, the kernel of wheat that we put in the ground dies. But it is only when it dies that it produces many seeds. So, it takes time. We should remember that part as well. There is seed, time, and harvest. Genesis 822. Let's look at this picture now. You put the seed in the ground. It takes time. And then you get a bountiful harvest. Thank God for what I've been able to cover today. You can tell the devil doesn't want me to speak today. 
But I praise God. God's word is strong, is sharper than any two edged sword. Mm -hmm. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word is powerful. Yes. Just it doesn't matter how it sounds without the coughing in between. God's word will accomplish God's will. Praise God. And I pray that you are blessed today. Go ahead, get involved so so you can reap, but do it carefully. God bless. We'll see you next time.